let's talk about consistent hashing, including the problem it solves, how it works, and when it might come up in a system design interview. Now, consistent hashing is easiest learned via an example. So imagine we host a simple events website, something like Ticketmaster. It starts really small, so we only need a single server and a single database that stores all of our event information. Now, as the site becomes more popular, we have way too many events to store on that single database. So we add two additional databases, but there's a problem. For each given event, how do we know which database that event should be stored in? Is it stored in one, two, or three? We certainly don't wanna to have to query all three databases every time a client requests some information for a given event, simply because we don't know which database it's actually stored in. One approach, as shown here, is to hash the event ID with some hash function. This can be an MD5, murmur, whatever it may be. And this will give us some large number. We can then take that large number and mod it by the number of database servers that we have, in this case, three. That will return a number between one and three indicating which database that event should live on. And so in our case, event 1234, when hashed, is 67211, mod 3 equals 2, and so it should be stored on database 2. This hash with modulo approach worked great to start, but the site continued to grow. And when we went to add a fourth database, we ran into a really big problem. See, by changing the number of database servers that we had, We've also now changed the modulo in the function. It's gone from mod three to mod four. The issue with this is that this means almost all data now needs to be redistributed, not just data that should be in our new database four. This example makes that really clear. So if you remember before, event one, two, three, four existed on database two because we had this function where we modded by three. Now, if we instead run this by, uh, with the new setup, modding by four, now it should exist on database three. And so that means event 1234 would need to be moved from database 2 to database 3. And 1234 isn't alone, it's not an isolated incident. Almost every single event in our database needs to be moved or redistributed. The, this redistribution is really bad. It creates a surge in database activity, and this can slow down or in some cases even crash our site. The problem didn't stop there either. Uh, let's say that we needed to decommission database 3. Maybe it was getting old. So we would need to move the data from database three over to both one and two respectively. But since our modulo has changed again, we've not only redistributed all of the data from database three, but we also redistributed all of the data once more. And so looking back at our example, uh, event one, two, three, four, which was on database two, in theory shouldn't need to move, but now it's moved to database one. Okay, so now that we understand the problem, let's go ahead and introduce the solution, consistent hashing. And so consistent hashing uh, consists of three steps. The first step is that we create what's called a hash ring that has a fixed number of points. And so to keep it simple, we've illustrated here just zero to 100. Now in reality, this is zero to two to the 32, basically the full integer space, uh, but the concept is entirely the same. So we'll stick with zero to 100. Now, we then evenly distribute our databases across this hash ring. So in our case, we have four databases. We could point them at 1, 0 0.25, 0 0.50, and 0 0.75, respectively. And now, in order to know which database a particular event should be stored on, we first hash the ID just like we did before. Imagine that event number two hashed is 16. We then find that point on our ring, 16 is here, and we walk clockwise until we hit a database. So in this case, we hit database two, and we're gonna store event two on database number two. Now, this might seem obvious, but this ring isn't physical, of course. It's just a mathematical construct that's programmed into your code. Um, but let's take a look at how this solved our problems from earlier. And so if we wanna go ahead and add our fifth database, like we did before, look at what happens. Let's say we add that database and we put it at point 90 on the ring. We could put it anywhere, but we'll say 90. Now the only events that need to be redistributed are any events that hashed to the range 75 and 90. These are events that were previously on database one and they now need to be on database five. But all other events stay exactly where they were. There's no longer this mass redistribution. Now the exact same thing is true when we try to remove a database as well. And so in this case we can remove database two and only events that hash to 
uh, a spot on the ring between 0 and 25, like event 2, which hashed to 16 before, need to be moved. They were previously on database 2, and now they need to be moved over to database 3. Okay, so we've solved for most of our problems up until this point, but there's one last thing to take care of. And so ideally, if we remove database 2, we wouldn't store all of the data from database 2 on database 3 as we're doing now. This means that database 3 has 2x the amount of data as database 1 and database 4. So the question becomes, how do we make sure that the data is more evenly distributed when a database exits the ring? And the solution is something called virtual nodes. And so instead of putting each database at just one point on the ring, we can put it at multiple points. And so for example, if you take database one, we don't only put it at position zero, we can also put it at position 20 and 40 and 60 and 80. For database two, we don't only put it at 25, we can also put it at five and 45, 65 and 85, and so on for each of the other databases. And so what this means is that now if database two is removed, instead of all the data, all the events that hashed to this point on the ring going to database three, some of them are gonna to go to database three, those between zero and 10, but between 10 and 15, they're gonna to go to database four. And between 15 and 20, they'll go to database one. And 20 to 25 will end up falling on database three. And so as you can see, it ends up being a much more even redistribution. So now you know what consistent hashing is, but when does it come up in a system design interview? The reality is most of your favorite services use it behind the scenes to scale. Each of Redis, Cassandra, DynamoDB, uh, most CDNs, and many more all use consistent hashing. Now in an interview, you might make a nod to this when you introduce any of these technologies, but the only time you're really going to need to go deep into describing the algorithm is if you're designing a single scaled backend component, something like design a distributed cache, design a distributed database, uh, design a distributed message queue, or so on. Uh, lastly, if you really like this video and you want more free content to help you prepare for your software engineering interviews, head over to hellointerview.com. We have everything you need over there. Good luck with your interviews. Bye-bye.